So for today's chapter, again, chapter five, real estate brokerage activities and procedures, we're gonna be talking about operations. This is, this is standard practices and procedures for escrow monies, for signage, what you're allowed to do with cell phones, what you're allowed to do with phone numbers in general. Um, we're gonna talk about the process for buyer disputes, um, and then a few other things as well, um, trade names, can we do an LLC, who's a point of contact information. All these things are gonna be covered in this chapter. Uh, it's a big chapter, it's gonna be about eight questions on your state exam, so this one's really, really important. Um, not like chapter four is one of my favorites, it's just one of those, it's just ruling stuff that you need to know legally. So, <clears throat> where do I get started on this? There's about 70 slides, so we wanna get through this. Uh, we'll do it in two parts to make it a little bit easier to kind of digest. So. Uh, let's see here. So starting with offices in general. So again, I'm going to just do the same thing I've done and all the other things. Just read the slide and then kind of elaborate on each slide as we go, right? So active brokers must have an official registered office with the DVPR. This is the official office for our real estate school. Mm -hmm. The real estate office for my brokerage is in another address, right? Has to have an enclosed room of stationary construction. So this would actually, this room, because it has a door that shuts, could be a brokerage. So the, Just this one room. I could have another office out there for something else. I prefer not to do that, right? Um, everybody's got a little different way of doing things. Office can be in the broker's residence as long as it complies with zoning and the HOA, right? So we also have a home office. I can register that as a branch office if I want as long as my HOA is zoning allowed. Most of the time they want to see commercial residential zoning. Um, most houses aren't, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of offices that still work that way. As long as, as, long as the HOA is okay with it, typically they don't care. If it's a residential, there's no problems. As long as it's, as long as it's compliant with zoning. With zoning, okay. Right. Um, you can't have an office in another state. Um, I do have an office in another state, like you had asked me earlier, um, but it's not for Florida real estate, it's for Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And then you personally cannot register an office here. If you can have a home office, you can't register that office and you can't keep your license at that address. So your license has to be under your broker's address. So when you get mail from say realtor.com, it's gonna to come to the brokerage. And then you're gonna get a mailbox in the office mm -hmm. and put it up that way. Right. That's how it works with brokerage office. Got so it. just know that it has to be stationary construction, it has to be a, a lockable, closable room, right? It has to be stationary construction, so you can't put a tent outside or like a partition. That wouldn't count. You have to literally have a closable room. Okay. So a broker has to register each branch office. So if I wanted this to be an office and I wanted next door to be an office and they had different yeah. addresses, I have to register both of them. So if this is like, a310 suite 310 and that's A310 suite 310 A, I'm gonna have to register two separate offices. We're not doing that with this one, it's just gonna be one suite, but if you did that, you would have to, right? Branch office registrations are not, trans or registrations are not transferable. So if you close this office and you buy the building you two doors down, you have to re-register that office, then close this office. You don't wanna go and not have an office because then you're, then you're mm -hmm. not compliant. And again, temporary shelters are not allowed to be branch office. Now, some people will say, well, then what about the builders that put the trailers out there to sell our houses? Well, that's a registered office, mm -hmm. and it's going to stay there for two years. So that's not really temporary, okay. right? It's going to be there long term. Mm -hmm. as, as long as their sales associates permanently assigned or they're doing sales transactions, okay. closing okay. those. Doug, can you have two different uh, brokerage names and be a broker? So we're going to talk about, I can, I can have two different brokerages. Next door, I can have another brokerage, for example, right. right? However, you can only work for one employer, right? I can own two, but you can only work for one. Because theoretically, I'm not getting paid as a sales associate for both. Right. I'm going to sell under one brokerage. So you can have agents under the other But brokerage. I can own another brokerage. I can have agents under that brokerage, but we can't. We can't sell under both brokerages. We can only work for one employer. Mm -hmm. Got it. 
You cannot commingle. Yeah, well, you don't want to anyway because we're going to talk about um, relationships later, and you don't want to ever be in a situation where you're going to look like a partnership and you're not a partnership, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the term in general later. Um, so here's your office signs. Little Mo Realty, Merle H. Crawford, licensed real estate broker. So on a real estate sign, there's three things you have to have. Number one, you have to have the name of the company, right? Number two, you have to have the broker's name. Number three, you have to words licensed real estate broker or LIC period real estate broker. This is the only two acceptable ways that it can be written. So the question is, so what about me? Can I put my name on a sign? Can I put sale associate's name on a sign? Can I put brokers on there? The answer is yes, um, but there's so much turnover in the real estate business, it wouldn't make sense. You'd be changing the sign every other week, mm -hmm. right? So you can put what a lot of companies will do, broker's name, broker's name, licensed real estate broker, and then they might be like office manager, broker, office broker, or managing broker for this office, right? They might have that on there because the managing brokers aren't gonna change that often, right? If you include that, you can put the associate name below the names of the brokers, because it goes by rank, right? Include the type of license next to each name, such as sales associates, right? Liner space must separate associate names from broker names, because they don't ever wanna give the perception that the sales associate is a broker. Mm -hmm. Because we all know that practicing as a broker when you're not is a third degree felony. Mm -hmm. right? So this is a uh, option. This is option. This is option. I would never do this, and I don't think any broker. Would I don't do think this. I've seen this before. The only time broker. you would see this is maybe if it was a family broker, like a family business, where it's me and my daughter and my son in a little town running a business. Then mm -hmm. it would be like me and then my daughter and my son, and then we're all brokers or their sales associates, whatever the case is. You, you, we do that just to know, let them know that this is a family mm -hmm. business, right? Right. But otherwise, I wouldn't ever see a big broker. You know, never see a franchise broker or anything with that. These would just be the rules to go by in case you did. Right. So here's another one, right? Same thing, right? Broker entity sign. Same thing. Kellogg Real Estate Inc. Sandy M. Kellogg, licensed real estate broker. That's Three things you need on the license. It's easy, right? Mm -hmm. That will be on the test. Uh -huh. Okay should be a one point easy give me, right? If a brokerage entity is a partnership corporation or LLP, okay. company sign must contain the name of the firm or the corporation, at least one of the brokers, and licensed real estate brokers. So if we're both brokers, or all three of us are brokers, and we own, let's say, JGL mm -hmm. Brokerage Incorporated, right? It's all three of us, we're a corporation, we're an LLC, Name of the firm will be JGL Brokerage Incorporated. One of, one of our names could be Guillermo Quintero, right? And then the words licensed real estate okay. broker, right? That's what we doesn't have to be in right? at least one person. But you can't be a licensed real estate broker unless you did what first? Do you remember that question? Yeah, you had the two years in the business. Yeah, you had yeah two years in the business. You had your 45 hour post license. Right, right. 45 hours. So I want to bring that up because you're going to see it again, right? But, that, but licensed real estate broker, must be there. And that uh, the active broker, could that also be a uh, associate, or what do you call it, the uh, assistant broker, or? Mm -hmm. no? It could be, if there, it doesn't have to be the managing broker, as long as one broker, one registered mm -hmm. broker, In not a broker associate, okay, actual broker, broker associate. Okay. Right. So there might be three partners no, that are all brokers equally. They have Got to be it. brokers. They have to be brokers. Remember the difference, broker right. associate is a broker, assistant. sales associate, right? right? It's a broker associate that works for an actual broker. Right. So they're not registered as a broker, they're registered as, as a broker associate. So that's the difference. Right. So right here, anybody that advertises or claims to be providing real estate services as an active broker, right? We talked about that with rental lists and everything else, right? If you're going to be advertising, you're advertising as a broker. Now, sales associates allow to advertise because they're under the direction of the broker. But, there, but it is a broker activity, so we're, we're liable for your advertisement. If it's incorrect, it's going to come to me. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to 
pass that fine to you. So the freck will but reach out to The you. freck will reach out to me. Right. That person is under you. Advertising must inform people they're dealing with a licensee or a brokerage firm, right? The broker is responsible for all advertising. This is what I'm talking about. The broker is responsible for all advertising. Now, I added this in here because I didn't like that the presentation didn't put that in there. The broker is responsible. Ultimately, we're okay. responsible. So you always want to ask your broker to review your business cards, before you know, they, your, your mail outs before you order them. Because, before they post everything. Yeah, because if, yeah. if you do it before you order them, then you don't have to rebuy things and right. throw the other ones away. Now, I must include the name of the brokerage firm. You always have to include the name of the brokerage firm because otherwise you're a real estate broker, mm -hmm. right? If you, if you don't include a broker's name, well, who are they working for? Who can I go to? Well, broker's responsible, so you have to do that, right? That's the key to advertising that, number one, it's a broker responsibility, and number two, preferred rule number one, it's a broker responsibility. So then we have this thing called team advertising. So back, I'd say it really got started heavy in the late 90s. In the 80s, it had a few teams. In the 90s, it started getting more teams. In the 2000s, there was tons of real estate teams. So I got this group and this group and the red dress group and the, and the, the blue suit group. And I'm the fruit fruit club. I'm the investor special group. I'm the group of groupies, right? All these groups, right? So the name of that logo the name of the logo can be used to represent themselves as a public, but just remember, you still have to have an average a name brokerage firm. So, so the team can have a name, but it has to be also the brokerage firm has to be in there. Right. So I can say something like, "I'm the Little John Pro team. I'm brokered by Cobble Banker." Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to put the name of the brokerage. Right. right? So when I was evolving through the business, mm -hmm. you know, we were doing the Little John bro Brokerage team, we were doing, you know, a home team, we were doing uh, the Little John Tobino team, we are doing all these different names, trying to figure out what would work, you know, oh, and, and what they do is they try to make you feel like you're better, right? So like realty executives, when the brokerage came out with realty executives, you don't hear much about it now, but it's still around. Realty executives made you feel like you're the executive group mm -hmm. of real estate, right? So it, it, the perception is the public will see that, right? So same thing with the names that you see in the, in the brokerages, right? You see these groups that say, we're the number one home team, or we're, I you see, know, that. see what I'm saying? We're the best yeah. group realtors, I see that in Facebook, right? Yeah. Right, so then they say, I'm the best group realtors, I'm powered by Watson, I work for Watson. Do they do, right? normally do it by areas? You yeah. might say, is yeah, that? so I'm the Nocatee elite team. For example, right? I could say I'm the Nocatee Elite Team. That means people are going to think that you work that neighborhood mm -hmm. and you're the specialist in that neighborhood. And then you say, okay, I'm Nocatee Elite Team. I've got eight agents, and all of us are Nocatee certified. We renew our certification once a quarter, but I'm still working for Remax, mm -hmm. right? So you have to you have to advertise. This is the key here. You have to advertise the name of the brokerage. However, the other one can change. But this team concept allows you to serve a wider group of customers. Right. So I run my brokerage as a team. I have an agent that lives in Yulee, have an agent that lives in Nagatee, have an agent that lives in St. Donald's, I have an agent that lives in St. Augustine, I have an agent that lives in Middleburg, I have an agent that lives in Orange Park, I have one that lives in Westside. So all I have to do is when somebody calls me, I have one that lives at the beach too. So if they call me and they want to look at the beach, hey Debbie, give them a call. You're close by, you're easy, it's very easy for you to, mm -hmm. to service this customer. Whereas if I'm calling a person from Middleburg, it might be an hour drive, right? I don't do that. I don't do that to somebody. So let's give them the best experience possible. So that's how the team concept works. And then usually the team lead gets a split off the team. So it's basically a team leader typically functions as a broker, but it's not a broker. They, they get all, they answer all the questions, they feel all the questions, and then when they, when they can't answer a question, they actually go to the real broker. So we'll be the Mandarin bilingual team. You could be, if you wanted to, you want to hire a team that was Hispanic? You can say, I want to, I'm going to cater to the Hispanic community. You're not going to just cater to them, but right. we speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. Provide an option. Yeah. yeah that's, that's right. The so there's a team in Jacksonville that caters to the Asian community. They don't just do the Asian community, but they have somebody that speaks like seven different Asian languages. So it makes it easy to communicate, say somebody that speaks Tagalog or Vietnamese versus 
somebody doesn't speak that because a lot of them don't don't speak English. It's a plus. And it's a plus. Mm -hmm. it, it's a good thing. So it's okay to advertise the uh, Asian or Hispanic. There's no issues. You can't say that I'm Hispanic group. You can say I speak Spanish. Okay. Right. You can't say I'm targeting a specific race because then that's going to be a violation to your mm -hmm. your uh, civil rights group. So you have to you, you have be to careful there, I got you it. have to say I speak Spanish, right? Yeah. Because if you speak Spanish, people will come to you to speak Spanish because they're going to feel comfortable speaking in their native tongue, right? I don't speak any other languages, so it's easy for me. I speak English. I'm going to give whoever speaks English. Right? And if I don't, I'm going to call you and say, hey, can you help me? Because this person speaks Spanish. I'll pay you a translation fee or we can split a deal. Right? Sure. One or the other. Right? So, but there's advantages of having people that speak you know, English, French, some J maybe Japanese, Chinese, Russian, whatever, whatever works. For your community, if there's More a large, if, say if there's a large Bosnian community, for example, if you have somebody that speaks that language, it's going to be easier to break through the language barrier because sometimes the words don't translate. Mm -hmm. They don't translate correctly, you know, when you talk about business. You know, so that that's that's important. Um, I agree. It's important for diversification, and we'll talk about diversity and stuff when we get to chapter eight. So. so all right, so here, here's the thing. You have to file an employee with the employee broker. So you have to come up with this name, right? And you have to file this name of the team with your broker. Okay? Mm -hmm. So once you come up with your name, I'm the AK team, for example. I'm, they go I'm, to you. I'm the Alaska team, right? Or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, right? They have, to, they have to file this with the company. The company then has to keep it on record so if they're audited by the Department of Business, mm -hmm. Real Estate Commission, right here, we have it. You have, we have to keep a record of those team members as a broker. So the team, if I wanted to assign, say, half my agents to a team, then I would have to keep a record of that monthly. Mm -hmm. Now, the way they do that is through an independent contractor agreement, and they keep it they keep it in a file. It's like an HR file, basically. So you make everybody sign. And so each one of these team members pays a monthly fee to keep maintenance, typically. That's typically how it works. Team name and ad must be no larger than the broker's name. So, has to be short. so if you say I'm I'm the AK team, you can't put you can't put Watson Realty under here, right? Mm -hmm. The font has to be the same size, or it's legal to put it like this because this is smaller than this. But it can't be larger. The team name can never be larger than the broker's, than the broker's name. name. So broker's, broker's name, name has to be count. Because ultimately, who's responsible for advertising? The, broker. the broker's responsible for advertising. Brokerage, broker. When I say broker and brokerage, we're the special agent, that's who's in charge. Right? Special Remember, broker's a special yeah, agent or a general that. agent, right? Yeah. And then the other people are sub agents when they work together. Some agents. Right. So team advertising rule applies for all advertising. So that could be your business cards, could be posters, mail outs, door knockers, newspaper print, TV ads, internet, websites, everything. It applies to everything. Words that can't be in a team. So these names, these particular words can't be in a team. The reason they can't be in a team is because they all insinuate that you're a broker, that you're a broker, right? If I'm the agency, if it's if it's Will and Associates, if it's Lena Brokerage, right? It's, 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 misleading. Like brokerage. it's misleading the public, right? So agency, associates, brokers, brokerage, company, corporation, LLC, LLP, LLP, partnerships, per properties, or property, real estate or realty. Now my email address is Little John Properties. But that could be my corporation that I'm holding an LLC in. It can't be a real estate practicing brokerage. None of my businesses has Little John Properties in it. Like, none of my business names have Little John Properties in it. Now, because I'm a broker, I can, but I have to register with the state of Florida. As a sales associate, as a team associate, you can't use any of these names. You can't say Will and Associates. You can't say Will and Associates Realty Team. Like no associates, no agency, no brokerage. Right, so no. Will, Will and Associates and Realty Team would have two violations in the name, right? Yeah. 
You can do group. Yes. You can do group, right? You can do group. You can do, you can do team. You can right. do group. Group right. team. You can, right? Specialists, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm the Riverside specialist team, right? I'm the executive team. It's executive right? team. I like that. See what I'm saying? You can do these other right. things. You just can't put these other. Things. We're the Realty Elite Executive Group. It's legal. You can do a record, right? Man, yeah, that's a good one. So then we have this thing called a blind advertisement, right? So we've gotten through what's legal, mm -hmm. right, as far as team names, what you can and can't do, what a broker has to do, what the responsibilities are, who, who it falls on. Then we have this blind advertisement, right? Blind advertisement means I put my team name out there and I didn't disclose what broker I work for, right? So they don't know who you're working for. So partially blind is when you do the font too small, right? kind of is misleading. Mm -hmm. Same thing here, if you don't put the broker's name at all, I get that question all the time. Do I have to put the broker's name on there? Yes, you have to put the broker's name on there. Yes, you have to use my logo. Yes, you have, because my logo has the broker's name mm -hmm. in it, right? You have to do that. And it has to be as big as yours. Because people don't want to advertise the brokerage. They want to advertise themselves. It's a self-employed business. Of course you want to do that. But you still have somebody that's your boss. Right. So on the business Not boss side, in the sense that you work for them. The boss actually works for you, but you still have to have it. Right? It's a representation, the broker. Right. So misrepresenting public is illegal, right? Blind advertisements mm -hmm. are illegal. Advertising must be worded so people understand who they're dealing with and that this person is licensed. Because if you go up to somebody and wholesale a deal, you don't have to disclose it because you're not licensed, right? But if I go and broker a wholesale deal, I need to let them know that I'm a licensee, that I might know more about the market than they do, and they need to understand that I'm gonna make money off of this deal doing an assignment of mortgage, or assignment of contract, right? Right. Advertisers must clearly reveal the license name of the brokerage firm. So it goes back to the print, right? It has to be the same size or larger. If it's internet advertising and you're advertising a brokerage, you have to have the broker, the brokerage and broker name contact brokerage accessible name. immediately adjacent to each spot. Right next to right? it. It has to be there because you have to clearly reveal and tell people who you are, which you want to do anyway. Because if you don't tell people who you are, they're not going to. So you have the brokerage, the broker name, and what other information? The logo? I do, but I mean. It's, but it's, no contact information, only the name and brokerage name. You want to put that on your card, but you have to have the name of the brokerage because they have to know who to But not the contact. phone number of the broker. Sometimes and sometimes not. It depends on what it is. Is it required? It is on signs. We're going to get signs. to that. We're going to get to that. Got it. All right. So you'll see signs, and just to kind of get off subject, but to see signs, if you see a, say, Watson sign in the front yard, yeah. you have the office phone number on Let's say it's 220-8000, right? Just to throw a number out there, right? right? And then you're gonna see a sign writer on it that says Jim Smith, 904-733-1826 or something like that, right? I've seen them like that. They're so that's how they do it because they want you to, people will call that sign writer. They won't call the office because they call the office, they're gonna get one of 100 agents, yeah, right? right? They wanna call the agent that listed the property because they wanna know about the property, right? Who's gonna know better about the property? The person has it listed, or the person sitting in front of the computer at the office saying, oh, give me a second, let me look it up. But if the agent doesn't pick up, you can call the office and, you can call and say, the hey, office. the agent? Correct. <laughs> or you can call the office and say, hey, I've tried to call this agent six times, I can't get a hold of it, is there a managing broker? So it's a plan B. It's a, it's a nice feature, I think. It's a nice stuff. Right, because yeah. when you call the office, normally what happens is they transfer it to the agent. Yeah. Right? So, because I'm the broker, I have things different. I do have office signs that when you borrow an office sign from me, then you have the office phone number on it. If you have, if I have my own signs, I am the broker. I am the broker, so I have my number on those, right? Either way, you get the brokerage, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter. In my case, because I'm the broker, right? It's a little different when you're talking about sales associates, because we have to control that for legal purposes. So licensees may use their personal name and ads provided they include the last name as registered with the DVPR. So you can't say this is the Will Group, but you can't say I'm, I'm the Quintero Group. You're allowed to put the last name. You are. Right? Okay. Right? I can't say this is Dan's team, unless my last name is Dan, right? 
Yard signs must include the registered name of the brokerage firm. Again, you have to have their company name on there. Name of brokerage firm must be in all promotional materials. The sales associate's name can also appear. So business cards, postcards, and that stuff, you can still Always name on your firm on it. Look, I have personalized signs for my agents. They have their pictures on their signs, but it still has the name yeah, of brokerage yeah. firm on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. I still put that on there. It's on the corner of every one of mine, very visible, it's mm -hmm. on the corner. And it's got your name too. No, it doesn't have my name. name. I, as a broker's name. Got it. And that's official. I don't want their calls because if I get their calls, I'm going to answer the phone and go, I don't know. Let me get you in touch with the agent. I don't want to do that. I want the agent to get the call because they're a specialist. They understand their subject matter expert. They understand their listing better than I do. Right? So then we have false advertising. Well, that's pretty self explanatory. Something's mis misleading the public, right? Mm -hmm. Anything misleading the public is illegal. It's a second degree misdemeanor. We're not going to cover second degree misdemeanors much, but basically, a second degree mis misdemeanor is $500 fine and 60 days in jail. Okay. Uh, or could be either or. Right? Licensees cannot use an association's name or a designation unless you're currently a member. So you can't say you're a realtor if you're not a realtor. You can't say you're a graduate of Real Estate Institute or you have a CAM license unless you have it. Right? So if I put on my license, I have an MBA and I don't have an MBA. Well, that's a false that's advertisement. That. You could get a fine and, and go to jail, All right? Both a broker and a sales associate can be disciplined. So because, why, why is that? Why, why can I get disciplined for what you did? Because you're responsible as because a broker. Because I'm ultimately responsible as a broker. That's why we always want to run our advertisements by a broker, right? Make sense? Yeah, everything has to be run by the broker for advertising. Run by the broker. That's the way it goes. Here's your internet. Internet advertising requires a couple different things. Um, mailing address, street address, email address, and uh, telephone or fax number, right? Fax numbers are pretty obsolete nowadays. Most people are doing FaceTime calls and everything else, right? They're not really doing faxes. We're doing cam scans and emails, mm -hmm. right? Or we're doing, we're doing e-signs or all this stuff. There's no faxes. When I started in the business, there was faxes, right? Yeah. Right. There was laws that surrounded faxes. Now they're but all, the, the laws are still, the laws are still, still there, them. right? The laws are still there, but they're obsolete, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? Brokerage name must appear adjacent to, and I just talked this, mm -hmm. broker name must be adjacent to or immediately above or below the contact information. So if you go to the website, just my company website, for example, you're going to see my name, brokerage name, my name, broker contact. It's always going to be on every single page of the website because I want to make sure that I'm more than compliant, mm -hmm. right? So not everybody does that, but it should be there no matter what. I want you to be able to contact me. So then we have this whole thing, well, what about FISBOs, right? Mm -hmm. I'm selling my house myself. I don't want to be under my brokerage. I want to sell it myself because my broker is going to charge me half of my commission mm -hmm. to sell my own house. Well, first of all, your broker shouldn't ch charge you half of your commission. First of all, if you sell it by owner, you sell it yourself. You're not, getting You're not charging yourself a commission. Right. I wouldn't, unless there was a reason to, maybe cap gains or something like that. There's a reason to, because if I pay myself my salary versus I pay myself on a cap gain, the tax rate might be less, right? Licensees may sell their own property by owner. My thoughts are, is I want to list it with my company. Number one, I want to be on the MLS. Number two, I want people to understand that I trust the company that I work for and that I don't have a negative feeling towards the brand, right? Because if I put a for sale by some owner sign in the yard and I work for Sotheby's International, for example, what am I saying about the company if I'm not willing to put their brand in front of my house? It, it doesn't You're make sense. You don't, trust the brand. you don't trust them. But they're a perfectly good company, right? So why would I do that? If I didn't think they were a good company, I wouldn't work for them. Well, it's because the broker's limit. The broker doesn't have a say in their commission if they do it that way. Well, I don't feel like that. I think you should have a conversation with your broker mm -hmm. and let your broker and you hash it out and work it yeah. out, right? Can you, you can advertise it in your personal name and you can put your contact information on there, but you should always disclose your licensee because you have a one-up since you're considered a professional, mm -hmm. right? So always disclose to the seller. So what people will usually do for sale by owner, 
Jamie Little John, licensed real estate broker, or seller is licensed real estate agent, or seller is licensee, right? So that they understand that they're negotiating with somebody that may understand the market better than them. Right? Because you and always. They're still doing it by owner. They're not running under. Yeah, and I sold one house by owner when I was a licensee, and, and, and I thought about it. and I thought about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, why am I doing that? Do I not trust the company I work yeah. for? Well, actually, I didn't, so I ended up leaving That's that good. company and going somewhere else, right? And it wasn't that I didn't trust the company; it was that I didn't like the broker, right? So, you people do have reasons for doing that. Well, you, if you don't want your broker to get paid, meaning part of the but you can to talk to them and say, listen, I'm selling eight million dollars a year in properties. Can I get my deal, my personal deal, for free? Right. Exactly. How many brokers yeah. would say yes? Exactly. A lot, you think? Some. It's about 50-50. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I know. Uh, most of the time, it's not a franchise broker. Most of the time, it's a mom and pop broker. Right. Mm -hmm. Franchise brokerages are restricted by corporate rules, mm -hmm. right? So they may or may not allow you to do that. It depends on the it office. Maybe different. It may be a corporate regulation. If you work for, and I, I like to use Watson because they're the biggest name, right? If right. you work for Watson and you have 20 offices, say. Each office might be a little bit different too. Uh, Each volume might be a little different. Each franchise or now the overall company thing is the same, mm. right? But there may be little things in the office based on the broker and, and their relationship and the volume of the office that might change things, right? Yeah. So most of the time, corporate structures are pretty rigid, pretty solid. Yeah. Here's your telephone solicitation. So we're going to talk about a few things about telephone solicitation, like hours you can call, stuff like that. Initiation of the call must be for encouraging purchase, investment, property, goods, and services. So when you make a call wholesale, you say, I might be interested in your property. Right. Right. Or I might have a buyer for your property, right? Making telephone calls to get listings or to get buyers is solicitation. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different as far as rules are concerned. You can call as a buyer and be not, not be subject to the same rules as if you're calling to actually solicit for a listing, right? It's regulated. A state and federal law, there is state and federal do not call list, and then the calling hours are restricted 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Yeah. Right? Earlier than late, 8 before 9. 8 to 9. Right? Yeah, 8 to 9. 8 to 9. 8 to 9. Right? Early and late. That's how I like to 8 before 9. 9. That's too late. For 8 me. before 9. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, people violate it all the time. I get calls at 11 30 at night for solicitations. Yeah. And I'm on both the state and federal do not call list. That's how I was thinking. And I go on dnc.gov. What's your number and, at? And I and I <laughs> I go on dnc.gov and I I um report every single the number. And then because if I'm not doing it, they're not going to do it, mm -hmm. right? That's in my my opinion. Now, I'm sure that's a text unit. If you have a business line, it's a little different. Text doesn't apply. Any hour, any time. This is voice only calls, telephone calls. Right? Got it. So mm -hmm. here's the thing, though. I have a personal number and I have a cell phone. People will call me and say, well, I'm allowed to solicit you because it's a business line. I said, actually, this is a personal line. You can call my business line. Well, my business line has a, um, you have to talk to the line before it will pass the call to me. So I know who it is before I pick up the phone. So if they, if they say something and I don't want to hear what they have to say, I don't pick up the phone. Because it'll say call from blah, 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 right? And, you to and if, if they don't say anything, then I know it's a robocall and I won't answer the call anyway. So the business line is there, but the business line is where I tell people. I, I literally will make them call me back. I'll say, I'm you sorry, I won't talk off. to you on this line. You need to call back on this line. Wow. And they'll argue with you. So here's the thing. We talked about, <laughs> we talked about the federal law and the, and the, and the state law, right? Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing on here. Federal law supersedes state law. So if federal law is more strict than state law, then you have to go with the more strict, right? You have to go with the federal law. So Florida law says there's a no sales solicitation registry, which you know, I just said that, right? Calls are early to late 8 a.m. before 9 p.m. 8 a.m., 8's before 9. So early would be 8, late would be 9, right? Administrated by the uh, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, you're not going to worry about that. Florida has a FSBO exception, right? You can call for sale by owners mm -hmm. anytime in Florida. However, we just said that federal law supersedes state law. Federal law says you can't call for sale by owners. 
So because federal law says you can't, Florida, you can't. So you have to follow the federal law. You have to follow the federal law, right? So national do not call registry, again, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. No exceptions. No exceptions to for sale by owners. Now, you can call a for sale by owner if you have a bona fide offer for them. If you have, if you want to buy it yourself or you have a buyer, right? You can't call them to solicit them, but you can call them to answer a question or whatever else, right? Right. right? You just can't call them to say, hey, can I come see your house? Right. Because right. what they'll do, a lot of times FISBOs, a lot of times an agent will call and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, um, I might have a buyer for your house, but I need to preview it first to see if it's something that would work for them. Mm -hmm. So if you really had a buyer, you would say, hey, I've been driving around, I have a buyer, um, would you mind if I come by and talk about compensation agreement, mm -hmm. right? That's what you would talk about. You wouldn't talk about, oh, I might do this and I want to preview that. No, that person wants to preview it's trying to get a listing, mm -hmm. right? I know because I put my house on Zillow, Fisbo, and I had 50 agents call me in a, in a we did too. Same with us. Right? They, they all said they wanted to come look at it, and every, they had a buyer. And every single one of those, I questioned them and grilled them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're not doing this right. And then I would say, by the way, at the bottom of that page, it says licensed real estate broker, mm -hmm. because I have to disclose it, I'm a licensed real estate broker. I said, so my problem is, if you can't read my advertisement, and you can't read that it says licensed real estate broker, and you're dumb enough to call me, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be doing real estate. Mm -hmm. And I said, by the way, I'm gonna report you because I'm on the not call list. And I do. Um, because again, if I have to do it right, they're gonna have to do it right. For sure. So don't call my FISBO listing. <laughs> I just don't call them. I visit them. Hey, I'm Hello. How you doing? Right. Face to face. Exceptions to national do not call us when we're representing a potential buyer. You may call on FISBO, mm -hmm. provided that buyer's interest in the property. So a lot of times they'll go a step further. They'll have a friend that wants to look at the property. Mm -hmm. The friend comes with them. They end up trying to solicit the seller. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not legal. You're not supposed to do that. People do it. Um, it's misleading the public, okay. right? Some of those people. You can contact yeah. people that you have an established business relationship for up to 18 months. So if you closed on your house, I can call you 17 months from now and say, hey, would you like to sell your house, mm -hmm. right? But if you train your customers right, this will never apply because they'll call you, mm -hmm. right? I got a call today for a listing from a lady that was married to a guy. She wasn't married at the time. They got married to get, they got married. I sold his house three years ago. She got married to him, they moved in next door. They sold that house on a flat fee listing. She called me today and says, hey, can you sell this house for having trouble selling it? Through right, three years ago, I didn't solicit her, she called me. The 18 month rule wouldn't have applied because I can't call them, but she called me. Mm -hmm. She called me and said, hey, can you help me out? Right? So if you make a good enough impression on your customers and you're good they'll at follow-up, they'll come back to you. Right? You okay. may contact the customer for three months after a business inquiry. So if somebody puts an inquiry and you get a lead, mm -hmm. and they called you and returned your call, you can then call them you can. Okay. Right? for up to three months. So that's where those credit, the credit, the management, you know, like mm -hmm. the customer resource or whatever, the customer management systems, that's where those come in handy because you can set appointments to call people back, right? Mm -hmm. My thoughts are is if I have to call them 100 times, I don't wanna work with them because they probably don't wanna work with me. Mm -hmm. They don't like sales people. They're getting 400 calls, right? Everybody has a different way of looking at it. My thing is that if you don't make the calls, you don't have to worry about the, the do not call list, right? If you do wanna make the calls, cross-reference it, call between eight and nine, mm -hmm. and don't call FISBOs unless you really do have a buyer, right? So if you're interested in buying it, you can call. Correct. Always. So if you're a personal investor, you can always call if you're interested. In but even if I'm an agent, I go like, if the property, I'm like, I like the house for me as a second. As long as you're looking for you. For me. Yeah. If you're looking at it as an investment, whatever you're looking at it for, you can make that call. But don't mislead them. And if that, you go there and you don't like the house, that's fine. But don't call them back and say, hey, can you list the house? Right. But if I wanted to call them and I realized that, hey, wait a minute. I know they say stay in your lane, but if rates drop and I can get it to my mortgage guy because I want to help the customer. There's someone that I want to kind of just give them white glove even though it's not my lane. Can I do that now? Mm, 
I wouldn't do it. Yeah, I think you're quit loading too much. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So then we have this email thing, right? We have this spam X, right? And I get people on this all the time. I get people on this all the time. Can't spam X. So you have to have a physical postal address, first of all, for email. You have to have a way to opt out, and they have to be able to opt you out within 10 business days, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of spam emails don't have this opt out clause. So I literally, okay. because I have nothing better to do half the time, hit respond and say, you're in violation, you need to, you need to add a opt out clause or an unsubscribe in your email. If you don't, I'm gonna report you. So I have to email you back with an opt out. I had a brokerage contact me trying to solicit me to work for them. And I responded, how can I work for your company if you're not compliant? Wow, that's good. Right? Man, you caught them. So, and they're, I was like, you're dealing with an instructor. Mm -hmm. Let's do things right, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can't plead negligence because I know this stuff, mm -hmm. right? You have to follow the rules. <laughs> I need to follow the rules. Now, yeah. here's a good thing. I don't solicit people via email, so guess what? I don't have an opt-out on my email mm -hmm. because I don't solicit them. But you get those. Don't worry about it, right? Yeah. If I do solicit them, it's not a spam. It's a, hey, how are you? It's been a while since we've talked. You want to go to lunch? Mm -hmm. Direct. Right. It's very direct. It's not a. It's not yeah. a big yeah. blanket yeah. spam. Right. It's not a mass email. Word. Clearly indicate the person of business sending the message, including domain name and an email address. So when you send something, it needs to have the right things in mm -hmm. your in your in your signature lines. So it's covered. So you're covered, right? Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty easy if you think about common sense ones, right? Fax solicitations. I haven't seen a fax machine in I don't know how many years. Junk Fax Present Prevention Act and FCC rules. It still is in the test bank, so mm -hmm. we still want to keep it on there. Um, requirements to send to send fax advertisements. Date and time the fax is sent. Who sent it? Company phone number. And it has to have an opt out notice. Same type of rules as emails and everything else. Well, Who sent it? Company name and phone number. Boom, right? Awesome. I remember coming to the office when I first got this business on a Monday morning, there'd be 40 faxes mm -hmm. laying on the ground where the machine just spits them out. And it'd be out of paper. And you're like, what's wrong with these people? And it'd be everything mm -hmm. from blinds and shutters to painters to banks and car salesmen and warranty people. They just send you all these faxes. Bunch of extra. It's like spamming your email, but spamming your fax machine Thank and waiting your name. The banking centers that it would just work. They still get them, right? Oh, yeah. Every day. They get the spam. Oh, them. my God. Because it's all done through Rotor really dollars. Yeah, you just threw it away. So, this is a good place to take a break because this talks about something totally different. So, we're mm -hmm. done with advertisement, which is the first part of chapter five.